Hello everyone, this is Krishna Dara from Neuradoc and today we are here with our new video of the USMLE first state high yield series and in the last video we did endocrine and today we are going to cover GIT, gastrointestinal system. The GIT system I will be dividing into two parts, the first part will contain all about uh, stomach, esophagus, intestine and the second part will be about liver, gallbladder and pancreas. So uh, buckle up. Take your first aid with a cup of coffee and just revise it with me and mark all the important points that I tell you and let's just begin. So we will be going with the order the first aid has given embryo, anard, physio, patho okay and pharma. We will be going the same way okay. So first it is given embryology. I don't think anything important is there in embryology. You just give a read uh, counterclockwise how many degrees and all those gut rotation when it occurs, what stage it occurs. So it's okay if you don't remember it for now. So just give a read. I'm not saying it's not important. Once again, this uh, series is just about what is very very high yield. Okay, you have to do everything but this video series is just about what is very very high yield. Okay, so skipping the first part and then coming to the ventral wall defect that is gastroschisis and omphalocele. You should be able to know the distinguish. You should be able to uh, identify the images. Which images are what? Okay, and uh, yeah, that's important over here. That's important over here. And moving ahead, moving ahead, congenital umbilical hernia. They will ask you one question over here. What happens here? Okay, and what other conditions are associated with it? So. Uh, pay proper attention while studying your videos. Moving ahead, we have tracheoesophageal anomaly. The one question that they will ask you uh, and that is very very high yield is they will ask you the neonic drool, choke and vomit with first feeding. This is one line that they will give you and another line will be that uh, they will give you that when the nasogastric tube is uh, entered to the nose, the, it is not visible in the x-ray. Okay, the, because as there is tracheoesophageal anomaly there is a blind pouch form okay so as a result there is no protrusion of the tube going downward so keep this in mind this line is very very important when the nasogastric tube is passed inside we are not able to see that under x-ray chest x-ray okay so keep this in mind here they have given already clinical test failure to pass nasogastric tube into the stomach so it will not be visible on the chest x-ray and this all images are important what are the types everything esophageal atresia all those points are very very important Moving forward, intestinal atresia. Intestinal atresia again very very important. They will ask you to distinguish between duodenal atresia and jejunal ilia atresia. Okay, you should know the difference. Double bubble sign. Actually, they have not given here jejunal uh, ileal atresia. I think there is a triple bubble sign, but it is not commonly seen, and they won't be asking you. So don't worry about that. Okay, they have given here extremely short triple bubble sign, but uh, you should be able to know the difference. You should be able. You should be able to know ki, uh how it is presented bilious vomiting is important sometimes they will ask the question between intestinal atresia and pyloric stenosis bilious vomiting is not present in pyloric stenosis but it is present in intestinal atresia okay so why this you can differentiate both the conditions okay so these two are very very important you should know what happens here and coming to the hypertrophic pyloric stenosis they will give you uh, non bilious vomiting non bilious projectile vomiting okay so this is very very hint bilious vomiting and non bilious vomiting you should pay special attention so about this topic very very important this page is very important esophageal atresia intestinal atresia and pyloric stenosis very very important coming towards the last part of uh, you know embryology that is the uh, pancreas and spleen embryology uh, the pancreas division and annual pancreas they will ask you what is happening here what is the pathophysiology here the pathophysiology means what is the process that is occurring here so here it is simple annular pancreas abnormal rotation of ventral pancreatic bud and pancreas division ventral and dorsal bud space to fuse Okay, so this is the mechanism that you should remember, you should be able to identify in the options given below. Okay, and one important line, spleen arises in mesentery of stomach but has foregut supply. So this is very, very, very important. Make sure all these points are covered in your revision and you must be knowing them while you solve questions in the UL. That's it for the embryology from GIT. Let's move forward with anatomy. Okay, so anatomy for GIT is very big. You should remember everything, the arteries, the structures and everything is important in GIT the first one being the retroperitoneal structures okay you should remember this you should remember this sad pucker mnemonic very 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 important and this chest CT scan that is given 
you should be able to identify what is this what is this what is this everything because step one do it doesn't contain radiology they ask numerous questions of radiology so all the ct scans mri x-rays that are given in the first aid by heart done learn to identify check out more and more images on google and master yourself that's the only way you can master at your level if you're in the third year it becomes difficult for you to diagnose it so but you have to do it coming to the next page we have the various ligaments and i don't think uh, anyone question has been asked in the ul except for one they've asked the pringle manual okay they have asked the pringle manual you insert two fingers and you check the bleeding uh, whether it is from hepatic artery or inferior vena cava so all those stuff they will ask you one question is there in ul so when you solve make sure you are uh, able to do this just one question i don't think rest all questions have been asked but you have to give it reading anyhow so moving forward digestive tract anatomy this is just the histology part okay and this entire is very very high yield very very high. each and every line is very very high yield okay so make sure you know everything what points are covered in what mucosa sub mucosa and everything okay very very high yield moving forward we go to digestive tract histology try to identify the images given try to identify they have seen uh will i will be present here in the colon and all those the goblets and how goblet cells are visible how uh you can see micro villi parietal cells everything questions will be asked in ul one question is there identify the cells what layer of cell uh hcl is produced so why parietal cells and goblet cells and everything is very very important so this entire page of histology at most important i will give you at most important very 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 high yield so my, make sure you remember this page uh, proper moving forward to the abdominal aorta and branches yes this is again very very important if you have done anatomy from any other sources i would request you to go and revise back all the arterial supply of the abdomen this is very very important the branches are not clearly given in the first aid but uh, wherever you have studied please study the branches of sma and ima uh the all the left colleague in fear call all the branches please study it properly so that it becomes easier for you whereas this image is very very important they will ask you at what uh stage are uh, mesenteric artery divide bifurcate and uh, these two syndromes nutcracker syndrome and superior mesenteric syndrome you should be able to identify that they should asking when sma and aorta compress the third part of duodenum and here they will ask you the compression of left renal artery between superior uh, mesenteric vein and aorta so this is very very important okay the symptoms will be same they will the patient will come with a uh, pain in the abdomen vomiting and all those stuff they will give you the same and at the end they will just give you one hint that you need to pick it out that is nutcracker and superior and mesenteric artery syndrome try to rule out all the options and uh, rare question will be there for this but they will be there okay there is high yield and uh, moving forward the celiac uh, trunk branches i hope everyone has seen them in their anatomy dissection so please again do it very very important again as i told you all the arteries and everything is very very important in git they have given the image here also but uh, or not all branches have been mentioned here so you can revise the or your old anatomy notes that you have studied in your med school and that will be very very important moving forward we go to the post systemic anatomos anastomosis it's okay if you don't understand this but uh, try to remember this table okay just remember left gastric esophageal para umbilical small epigastric vein superior rectal middle and inferior rectal please remember, try to remember them okay because uh, they will come with a bleeding when they will be bleeding the patient will come uh, with a bleeding uh, like you know vomiting cough Wow, sorry vomiting blood so this all uh, anastomosis will be helpful over there okay so just if you don't understand just remember them they are important this is also high yield questions will be asked okay moving forward the pectinate line this diagram and this page very very important very i am saying very very important each and everything because the gid is a system where you don't have to apply more concepts just look at the symptom easy diagnosis easy remembering everything no concept change okay git is nothing but a concept just symptom pakro and then just diagnose easy diagnosis ct dekho mri dekho easy diagnose okay this is very very important the nerves artery vein pectinate line ke upar pectinate line ke niche above and below okay very 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 important make sure you remember them very properly internal hemorrhoid external hemorrhoid anal fissure anal fissure is a new topic that is added in the latest edition of first aid but in 2020 edition this is not given but these two are very very important which are painful which are not painful and uh, what else are differences what is innervation okay what is the vein what is the artery everything will be asked 
so make sure you know them properly okay don't leave this page this is very very important very very important okay so let's move forward now what is left coming to the liver tissue we'll cover liver in the when i uh, we go to the git part 2 liver and biliary structures all those hernias and everything we'll cover there so that's all for the embryology and anatomy now we'll start with the physiology and pathology part so let's move on to physiology part and physiology part you just don't have to understand anything just remember the hormones and the activities okay hormones the gastrin hormone and their activities like you know uh, what does it does like increases the make the environment gastric uh, acidic increases the motility okay and uh, what else you need to remember is regulation how the gastrin hormone is regulated okay so these two things are very very important the notes that are given over here they are just the extra point that you will be already studying ahead so don't focus there just remember the g cell i mean the name of cells their action and the regulation okay the uh, exam won't ask you the simple question like uh, what type of cell secrete this hormone they won't ask you like this. they will roam around and then ask they will tell you a person is consuming lots of burgers and pizzas and very fatty stuff then they will ask you what type of hormone will be released okay or else they will ask you what type of cells will be responsible for the hormone that will be released directly like this they will confuse you okay so just remember this table the entire page is very very important for the table and this is also another thing gastric acid intrinsic factor another source action and regulation okay the physiology is just about this stuff not to focus so much on physiology over here this is just given the you know the cells location and everything so uh, if you are thorough with the actions of hormone and everything so i don't think you will be required to study this more and more and uh, this vitamin and mineral absorption i hope you have already studied in the biochemistry part i will make a separate video for biochemistry also till now this bile bilirubin will cover in git part 2 okay so that's all for physiology nothing much just remember the hormone and regulation and activity that now starting with the pathology pathology is very very big but once again you don't have to understand anything just see the symptoms easy diagnose okay see the symptoms understand the pathophysiology and easy diagnose nothing else don't have to apply extra brains for this okay so let's start with the GIT pathology. The first one is oral pathology. None of them are important. The salivary glands, I don't think they really ask. I haven't uh, seen any question in the UL asking the salivary gland. But they have asked about aptus ulcers. Okay. So how aptus ulcer lose? The image is already given. This was not given in the edition 2020. I'm not sure about 2021, but it is given in 2022 now. And I think in 2021 also they must have given it. So this is how uh, aptus ulcer looks like. Okay. Easy to diagnose. Not to worry about anything. Very easy. Okay, moving forward, achalasia, achalasia, very, very important. They have asked so many, many, so many questions in this. Okay, they will ask you, Chagas disease associated with it. They will ask you about the LES pressures. LES pressures will be asked in achalasia. They will be asked in DES, that is diffuse esophageal spasm. They will ask in sclerodactyly, that is the sclerosis, along with the esophageal dysmotility. And everything they will be asking you about this. Okay. And another thing, the bird's beak. This image is very, very important. Radiological image is very, very important. As I told you, you haven't studied radiology in your third year. But step one, ask the radiological question. So you have to study it anyhow. And this is what the pathophysiology is. Failure of LES to relax during degeneration of inhibitory neurons, uh, air batch flexes and all those stuff. So this is what occurs in uh, echelasia. Another thing, the patient's presence with progressive dysphagia to solid and liquid. Okay. First, solid and then liquid. The patient will come. He will say, First, I was not able to uh, eat solid food, but I was able to drink. But later on, when it goes on, they will say, I am not able to drink also now. So, this is how they will uh, come up with a case. Okay. So, that's all for echelasia. Very, very important. Moving forward, we have this all the esophageal pathologies and each and everything is very, very important. Let's start with guess, GERD. GERD, LES tone is important. Hard burn is important. Regurgitation. Sometimes they will say because of regurgitation, there is a bad smell coming from the mouth okay so that is because of acid regurgitation and due to this the back molars and premolars will be in contact with the acid and as a result some parts will be attached to the teeth and it will release in bad breath okay so bad breath is also because of GERD it can also be because of acid and all those stuff okay and the hoarseness and all these are very very important so GERD is done 
each of hepatitis eosinophilic is given then they will give you ige or they will give you any allergy so if allergy and esophagitis is given then think about allergic esophagitis eosinophilic esophagitis why is of eosinophilic because ige increase eosinophils increase coming with the normal one esophagitis you need to remember this candida and punch out cmv linear ulcers each and everything they will give not they will not give you to identify it they will give you the images okay so this is about the candida pseudo vibrinus pseudo membranous and all those stuff okay so uh, and google about herpes also and google about uh, wait one more thing i'll see google about herpes google about uh, cmv cytomegalovirus please google it they will give you uh, in the ul in the exam also they will ask you though they have not given in first year you have to see it from google okay so that's all for esophagitis coming to plumber vincent and mallory wish plumber vincent you need to remember the triad easy they will give you this three triad symptoms and easily diagnose mallory wish they will give you vomiting blood vomiting blood after alcohol consumption okay so and they will ask you this the mucosal what will be the problem in the mucosa and hematemesis as i said vomiting blood abdominal back pain see and they have given alcohol use disorder so most of the patient will be alcoholic and then they will ask uh, why blood is coming so this is the syndrome mallory wish syndrome moving ahead to esophageal varices the image is already given down there is a dilated vein given here okay so esophageal varices mostly the reason for esophageal varices will be portal hypertension they will give you the case of liver cirrhosis and then they will ask you uh, what will be the esophageal anomaly here so esophageal varices dilation of esophageal vein okay coming to des what i was talking about along with achalasia here how you will distinguish between achalasia is by lh pressure normal lh pressure okay and uh, one more thing corkscrew esophagus google this image corkscrew esophagus the esophagus will be like this corkscrew okay and they have asked the radiological image for this okay though they have not given yet so be prepared moving ahead scleroderma again you will see here with the lh pressure scleroderma is a part of crest syndrome so this will cover it in musculoskeletal system see as given your part of crest syndrome there are five rhinos phenomena and esophageal disc motility and skin problem and all those stuff okay and esophageal perforation if esophageal perforation is given they will definitely give you something like a uh, surgical prob complication okay surgical complication due to removal of cancer or due to thyroid problem or anything else or any surgery is going on esophageal is ruptured or use of any uh, surgical instruments endoscopy and anything like due to that esophageal is ruptured so that is what known as esophageal perforation okay so that's it for the esophagus i think now let's move ahead we have barrett esophagus one and very important case of metaplasia okay barrett esophagus so you know what type of epithelium will be converted to your edge metaplasia is one epithelium to another epithelium conversion so you must know the replacement and image you refer robins also for the image refer google also for the image more and more image you will see more and more you will master it okay so barrett esophagus is very very important and coming to the last part of esophagus that is esophageal cancer squamous and adenocarcinoma each and everything is important and this risk factors are very very important because they will ask you obesity and then it is adenocarcinoma they will ask you the person has consume hot liquid hot tea and then they will ask you uh, what type of cancer is squamous cell carcinoma and and you have to remember what is common in america and what is common worldwide okay and these are the symptoms given here dysphagia the symptoms will almost be same in any of this okay any of the esophageal problems or symptoms will always be same you just need to pick out any one particular feature from that and that will what make you diagnose it okay with this we are done with the esophagus right then let's start with the stomach in stomach as you all know gastritis chronic uh, acute gastritis and chronic gastritis so in acute gastritis what you will be studying about burns brain injury nsa this is all about the basic feature how gastritis occurs pathophysiology of how gastritis occurs okay so in burns and crushing ulcers curling ulcer this is very very important you need to understand hypovolemia vagal activation acid stimulation all these are basic stuff pathophysiology stuff you need to understand them okay this one part where you need to understand apply your brain okay moving forward to chronic gastritis there are two main causes of chronic gastritis and the most main is hap helicobacter pylori h pylori very 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 important so if they ask you uh, which is the most common cause of gastritis your answer should be h pylori okay moving ahead 
you know uh, we have many tier disease but uh, not frequently asked so this is not i am not considering this as a high yield but uh, gastric is gastritis is high yield moving forward to gastric cancer is the last part of stomach i guess and uh, simply everything is important over here because this one part is pretty pretty high yield in exam very very high yield you need to and uh, in the you know metastasis they mostly ask about the krukenberg tumor okay that is from the ovary this they have asked in the reproductive system in u world okay reproductive in u world and you need to understand the signet ring cell signet ring cell it will be like this the cells will be like this so this is what known as signet ring cells and intestinal and diffuse type so you all know uh, ecadian mutation you should be knowing that uh, the smoke food smoke food east asian country specifically they will give you the example of china and in china and all the east asian countries they eat boiled smoky food okay so salty food the patient will be coming with uh, history that he uses lots consumes lots of salt so even that is very very important okay so consider all these factors and as i told you the symptoms will be same in each and everything abdominal pain uh, weight loss and all those stuff they will tell you okay you just have to pick out one or two points so this is what about gastric cancer and that is only adenocarcinoma okay so i think with this we are done with the stomach that uh, yeah we have one more point one more disease that is paptic ulcer disease and these are the ulcer complications sorry the pud is also very very important gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer you need to understand which is after you know meals which is uh, normal with the meals nothing like that and you need to understand the mechanism what happens here okay and which is the most common duodenal ulcer is the most common and uh, what we will be asking is they will be asking the complication they will ask you if hemorrhage occurs if it is a gastric ulcer what will be the position posterior anterior then they will ask you the name of artery bleeding gastro duodenal or left gastric artery okay so this is very 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 important so keep this in mind moving on to obstruction that is pyloric channel the pyloric uh, part will be get narrowed so that is what known as stenosis and perforation this image is very very important pneumoperitoneum you can see this this is what known as pneumoperitoneum about the diaphragm that is what known as uh, pneumoperitoneum and duodenal ulcers have more perforation anterior duodenal ulcers have more perforation okay so with this finally we are done with the stomach so now moving ahead the real deal is the intestine there are so many problems occurring in the intestine malabsorption inflammation and all other problems like large intestine small intestine colon everything will be covering right now okay coming to the malabsorption syndrome this is mostly about the uh, small intestine i think uh, okay small intestine and uh, most important will be the celiac disease over here celiac disease will be only because you know uh, this diagram is very important and then first day in 2022 edition i think in 2020 also they have beautifully explained this by the diagram this is the pathophysiology of celiac disease and this is very 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 important to know okay so keep this in mind and study this pathophysiology very very important okay as it is an autoimmune condition you all know it will be associated with hla symptoms this is autoimmune mediated it is a gluten sensitive the patient will come with saying when he eats bread he is having uh, intolerance he is having problem diarrhea or constipation and thinking okay and how you will di diagnose is the xylose abnormal and these two are the antibodies so see as it is autoimmune disorder antibodies are supposed to be present okay so keep this everything in mind and celiac disease you are good to go easy to diagnose it okay treatment is only gluten free diet and nothing else moving ahead let's go on to rest all are not very very high yield but they are high yield uh, sorry not high yield they are important not high yield lactose intolerance you all know you will be studying in the biochemistry in the galactose metabolism so mechanism will be understood there but here one important line osmotic diarrhea with decrease in stool ph and this uh, lactose hydrogen blood test is important okay pancreatic insufficiency just fat uh, absorption fat soluble vitamins absorption will be done tropical sprue same as celiac sprue only one or two uh, difference will be there and uh, most important here is jejunum but there ileum is uh, affected i think okay and another thing over here is it is seen in the people of tropics or people who have visited tropics caribbean islands that falls in the tropics okay and last one is whipple disease it is a mycobacterial infection tropherma whipplei causes it here what will happen is they will give you cvs symptoms plus git symptoms plus cns symptoms and plus 
muscular skeletal system if you find a combination of this and they give you image like this this is ph positive stain think about bipolar disease okay that's all for malabsorption syndrome coming to the next part of our chapter my it's very 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 high yield very high yield okay crohn disease and ulcerative colitis inflammatory bowel disease very very high yield each like i can find really 20 to 25 questions in front of my eyes from just this information okay so let's start Crohn disease, you know the difference, skip lesions, rectal sparing, but here is a rectal involvement. Under important thing I can tell you, but it is not the criteria, but it is important, like you can use it. Crohn disease occurs in right lower quadrant, ulcerative colitis in left lower quadrant. This is not actually true, but the question that I have solved, they have shown this. Okay, gross morphology, very, very important. Cobblestone mucosa, creeping fat, ball wall, thickening, string sign, the image is given here. So, and uh, linear ulcers and fissures here friable mucosa something that you fry okay so it will give the appearance of like that okay and uh, loss of hosta lead pipe appearance on imaging okay microscopic will be non caseating granuloma so the crown disease will be asked with all other conditions that is non caseating granuloma so make sure you know each and every condition of non caseating granuloma okay here there will be crepe abscess okay no granuloma is present here complications both same and uh, special complications will be there is there will be fistula formation the Crohn's disease and there can be perianal disease this is very very important perianal uh, if this is the anus uh, there will be you know reddish area or there will be uh, fissures around the anal hole and everything like that okay and here there will be toxic megacolon toxic megacolon is very very high toxic megacolon is in the x-ray you will see such a big colon like this it is easily visible on the x-ray and they have given in the exam i was asked this question toxic megacolon they have given me the image that's why i remember toxic megacolon very very important coming to intestinal manifestation diarrhea diarrhea it can be bloody non bloody not to identify based on diarrhea extra intestinal you will study this along with many many conditions okay erythema nodosum uveitis aptus stomata aptus ulcers they can cause and arthritis it can also cause with the rheumatoid arthritis okay Crohn ulcerative colitis i think can occur with the rheumatoid arthritis coming to another special thing is kidney stones kidney stones always occurs with a Crohn's disease and what kidney stones calcium oxalate there are four types of kidney stones we'll study in renal pathology and it may be positive for anti-saccharomyces cerevisiae antibodies and your primary sclerosing cholangitis you will study in biliary pathology treatment treatment is you will study in pathology all the sulfur drugs that we give you okay so all this is about Crohn's and ulcerative colitis each and every line very very high yield this entire page is very very high yield you should know each and every line the images have been given you can easily identify this is a string sign okay and see this friable mucosa i think this is a normal mucosa this is a friable mucosa i think okay i'm not sure just see the what the b image is yeah b image is normal and uh, c1 is pliable so just you can identify what the problem is there okay moving forward we have irritable bowel syndrome Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are inflammatory bowel syndrome now we have irritable bowel syndrome as you can see there is nothing high yield over here but one point is they might confuse you they will give you constipation plus diarrhea the patient comes with diarrhea and constipation both how is that possible sometimes he's having diarrhea sometimes he's not able to go to watch him not leak out completely okay so this is the problem both both is present immediately think about irritable bowel syndrome okay and the patient will come with uh, one thing he my bowel is not you know continuous continuous means he today he is going to watch him but after two days he is not going okay uh, for two days he is not going sorry and again he is going then again after three days he is not going so something my problem will be there so most common it is irritable bowel syndrome Moving forward to appendicitis, the most common disease that occur in each and every one, most common, it is most common in India, okay. So again, this is very, very important, each and every point is important, can be due to obstruction of fecalit, what is fecalit? Fecalit is, you know, uh, stone of feces, okay, the fecal matter that is collected, they might harden, as a result, it might cause problem, they can cause appendicitis, okay. You can easily see this, this is what known as fecalit. And here it is, you know, 
pathophysio sort of pathophysio is given how pain occurs in appendicitis okay so this entire line is very very important mac bunny point is important merely said p source obturator and rousing digit these are the hip muscles that can uh, uh, source sign out to the hip muscles they can cause pain along with the left lower quadrant and all these are very very important each and every line is very very important appendicitis you should know the radiological image also moving forward to diverticula diverticula basically is a blind pouch that occurs okay blind pouch forming out pouching from the intestine that is what known as diverticula there can be false and there can be true diverticula you should know which is false which is true and what is the difference between false and true diverticula so false diverticulum true diverticulum all gut wall layers and only submucosa and mucosa will be present okay so let's just see the two conditions diverticulosis and diverticulitis yes these are very very important these are also high yield you need to know okay in this diverticulosis they will give you mostly in the age greater than 60 years and they will give you obesity and diet low in fibers along with the alcohol okay alcohol use also and they will also tell you high uh, meat consumption and low in fibers okay protein or uh, fats and everything but fiber diet is very low so fiber diet is most fruit okay oat they are all fiber diet complications it will be include uh, painless hematocrysis hematocrysis is defecating blood in the stool okay So this is what about diverticulosis. Now we have diverticulitis, left lower quadrant pain. One problem, one difference between here is in diverticulitis you will be having fever, but in diverticulosis no fever. Okay, and there are in diverticulitis you don't have anything like uh, <coughs> low fiber diet or something else, nothing like that. Okay, complication, fistula formation can occur. There can be perforation. Okay, so the complication they won't be asking you most, but they will ask you per case give on uh, case based on the symptoms only. So don't need to worry about the complications over here. And uh, for the safer side, see what diverticula is and check out this image. They haven't asked in the UVL also, and they haven't haven't asked in the exam also the radiological image of diverticula. But make sure you know it then. Okay. All right, guys. That's it for this video. We have covered so far esophagus, stomach, and uh, small intestine. We are still left with the left uh, large intestine and many many uh, not many two three uh, small intestine problems like Hirschsprung disease, intestinal septum, Janker diverticulum, all those stuff. So along with the large intestine and everything, we'll cover with the GIT part two where I'll cover gallbladder and uh, along with that pancreas two three conditions and biliary apparatus and gallbladder that is all and liver. Okay. So as this video will be so long, so I am dividing it to two parts: GIT part one and part two. So I hope you have gained something from this video. This is just the high yield stuff that you need to focus on. And if you like this video, please share it among your friends. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you haven't watched the endocrine video, please go and watch it. And let us know in the comment what you want to. Okay. So study properly. Stay safe and good luck for your exams.